Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our evening prayer service this evening, what we also call Vespers. I am Pastor Chris Johnson, and I am joined by Pastor Ted Gulhagen and also our cantor, Irene Beebe. We begin with our service of light. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. with the church honor 
and the whole heavenly host, and may glorify you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We read responsibly Psalm 92. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to tell of your loving kindness early in the morning and of your faithfulness in the night season, on the psaltery and on the lyre and to the melody of the harp. For you have made me glad by your acts, O Lord, and I shout for joy because of the works of your hands. Lord, how great are your works! Your thoughts are very deep. The dullard does not know, nor does the fool understand, that though the wicked grow like weeds, and all the workers of iniquity flourish, they flourish only to be destroyed forever. But you, O Lord, are exalted forevermore. For lo, your enemies, O Lord, lo, your enemies shall perish, and all the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn you have exalted like the horns of wild bulls. I am anointed with fresh oil. My eyes also gloat over my enemies, and my ears rejoice to hear the doom of the wicked who rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree, and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age, they shall be green and succulent that they may show how upright the Lord is, my rock, in whom there is no fault. Let us pray. Lord, take our shame away, and make us rejoice in your saving acts, that all who have been redeemed by your Son may always abound in works of faith, hope, and love in your service, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our hymn in our green hymnal, the Lutheran Book of Worship, hymn number 157, a hymn of glory, let us sing. <laughs>
our, our lesson from the Bible tonight, this eve of the ascension, is from Luke chapter 24. St. Luke writes, Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should, should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them, and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and they returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple, blessing God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Grace and peace to you all from our God and Father, and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is, is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. The Lord has conquered the grave by virtue of his resurrection. And today, 40 days after Easter Sunday, we commemorate this important moment in redemptive history in which Christ the Lord ascended to the right hand of the Father. We confess this in the Creed. But often we don't give enough attention to what this moment means for Christ and for also for us, for the church. We really celebrate Christmas. We really celebrate Easter. But ascension tends to get short shrift. Maybe it's because of the spring and because of, I don't know why, uh, but the ascension used to be a huge celebration in the early church. And God willing, we can recapture this significant event for our church and for perpetuity. Because the fact that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father doesn't mean now that Jesus is on vacation. We have lots of kids and certainly lots of adults, parents, who just can't wait for vacation to come. Right? Especially with all this homeschooling going on, and I think lots of parents have a whole lot of respect for those other parents who choose to homeschool their children uh, because they see how difficult... <laughs> How difficult it can be to homeschool your children. And so people are longing and waiting for vacation so that they can be done with school and, and go on and do what they want to do. But the ascension does not mean that Jesus is now on vacation up in the sky, by and by, there he goes, never to be seen, never to return again except for the end of all ages. No, for Jesus to be ascended at the right hand of the Father means that Jesus is invested once again with all the authority and power that he had before his state of humiliation, as we call it in theology, when he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. He humbled himself into our condition to suffer the things that we suffer, to be tempted by Satan, to go through all that it means to be human, and also to the end, to the bitter end, to the grave, to the sorrow, to the bitterness of death. So our Lord, in his state of humiliation, experienced all that it means to be human, for we are indeed created in his image, and it's fitting that he would do that. Though created in his image, we are stained with sin, yet Christ is not. And so he lived a perfect life for us. And because he lived that perfect life, we are receiving what we call imputed righteousness, the righteousness that we need to stand before God, we cannot help to obtain in, in of ourselves by our own efforts. We need the righteousness of another, that of Christ. And so his perfect life is credited to you and I because of what Jesus, who Jesus is and what Jesus has done. But his work doesn't stop there. 
It continues on the cross where he conquers sin and the condemning power of sin. And it doesn't stop there. It goes through the grave into the joy of Easter where sin and death would not keep the Son of God down, but the Lord would vindicate the Son by his Spirit, lift him up from the grave. And here we are 40 days later to bring him up to where he came, to be seated at the right hand of the Father. So no, Jesus is not on vacation. Jesus, as he was in his state of humiliation as a person, and he retains that human nature always, he is with us even more now than he was before. See, before, in his state of humiliation, Jesus could be in one place at one time with the disciples and the apostles and so on and so forth, but now because he is seated at the right hand of the Father, he can be everywhere in his divinity but also in his humanity, and one of the great joys for the church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, and indeed daily here now at Zion, is we receive Christ in his divinity and his, in his humanity in the bread and in the wine of the Holy Supper. And so Christ makes himself present for all of his people through the mission and through the ministry of the church. And so Jesus ascends, he goes away, in order that he may be even more present than he ever was before. It's kind of a strange way of thinking of it, isn't it? He goes away to be even more present than he was before through the Spirit. And he is even more present than he was before, again, through the work and the ministry and the mission of the church, through how the church loves and serves their neighbor, through how we in the church provide God's people with beautiful music and song and hymnody, how the church provides God's people with the story of redemption through preaching and teaching, and how through the ministry of the church, God gives himself in this bread and in this wine for the forgiveness of our sins. And because of such a gracious gift, we can all be brought to our knees in thanksgiving to God for who Jesus is, for what he has done, and in part what it means that he is ascended at the right hand of the Father. I have really grazed the surface of what that means for us of Jesus being seated at the right hand of the Father. But no people of God that he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He intercedes for you and I, even as we speak. And he is powerfully present in the work and the ministry of his beloved church through his people for our salvation. What a glorious king we have. He reigns and he rules forever. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son.
I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus, Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. God's peace be with you this Ascension Eve and always.